In this video, I wanted to show you a technique that I've been using and working on for the last little while for the last couple of projects we've been working on, both National Geographic Monster Fish and Giant Bear. And This is underwater creatures and trying to get them to move convincingly, but do it fairly quickly. And a lot of the animation in this is driven by deformers, not by keyframed animation specifically. This is really important for me because a lot of I have to make so many of these creatures and move so quickly that I don't really have a lot of time to adjust things manually after the fact. So as much as I can, I'm trying to use automatic processes in the animation. So as you can see here with this technique, we're essentially using a Bezier curve to pull the puppet along and it deforms the puppet's body along with the curve. And you can combine that with a sine wave that actually then creates some really convincing body movement. So really all I'm animating by hand are the fins, the front fins, the face and the tail fins. Um, even the tail fins on the fish that we've done were mostly driven by sine waves that were that were driven by the whole body, so they're reactive. So as you can see, the model's really basic. They're, it's not a full 3D model. It's not even really a half of a model. The model's constructed directly from an illustration, from a Photoshop file that is pulled apart. Part of the aesthetic is the illustrator's style directly without trying to replicate it in a completely 3D form. So we're really just exaggerating the 2D drawing. Um, the, this puppet is fairly complicated compared to some of the other puppets that we've done, which were in Monster Fish. They're a lot simpler. They're almost just a 2D plane with fins, um, with just the slightest amount of curve to them. We had two 3D fish in this one, being, one being this little guy in the foreground here and the other being the monster fish itself. But all of them are driven by the same principle I'm about to show you. Utilizing this technique, I was able to make multiple fish quite quickly and change their directions very simply without too much extra work. All right, so let's get started. I, my hotbox controls aren't actually showing up when I press and hold the space bar. So I'm going to have to use the menus above so it's clear what I'm doing. What are we going to do first? I'm going to go to animation and I'm going to select the joint tool and I'm going to build a spine really quickly. Normally you'd have a character done already, but I just want to show you this technique really quick so you can kind of get your head around it and get an idea of how it works. So I'm just going to create a really quick spine here. Lots of bones. Now this could, would look like a nightmare if you had to animate each one of these, but we're not going to do that. You're going to see this in a second. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to create an IK spline for this. So we go up to here into, we're in the animation. So if, if you're on polygons or other things, you're not going to see the option menu. You need, you need to be under animation. And I can create this under skeleton. I can go IK spline handle tool. It's going to reset the tool. What it's telling me down here in the bottom corner is to pick the start point, the starting joint, then pick the end effector. And what it does is it actually creates a curve. Um, let's open up the outliner. Let's go window, outliner. What it's done is it's created a curve that we can manipulate to affect the spine. But this curve doesn't have enough detail in it for what we're trying to do. So we actually want to create our own curve for this. So I'm going to get rid of the IK handle in the joint. I'm going to go to curves here and select the EP curve tool. I'm going to make sure it's in cubic, or you can reset this. There you go, it's in cubic. So now what I'm going to do is just hold down the V key, and I'm going to create a point, an edit point, at each one of these joints. There we go, and press Enter. So now we have this curve. I'm going to rename this to CIK01, so the curve for the IK. This is going to be what I use to control my IK. And then go back to skeleton and we're going to create the ik handle tool now what i want to do is turn off the auto create curve and the options here so now again it's telling me to pick the start point so i click that and it says to click the end joint or effector so i click that and now it's going to ask me to select a curve for the handle and that curve because it seems simple there's not a lot of curves everywhere i can just click here and there it's automatically created it so we've got this control here so now let's just have a look at what that means you can see I'm getting a lot more fine control over that actual spine since we have so many controllers. I can also press B and I can use a soft selection tool. 
to get wider control. So it's better to have more points than less, in my opinion. So now that I have this, uh, it's actually very powerful because I can use all of my deformers, nonlinear deformers, and all kinds of tools to this to actually affect the spine. The first example is I'm going to actually create a sine deformer, and we're going to attach it to this IK curve. So let's go here. Let's go to create deformer, and I'm going to create under nonlinear, I'm going to create a sine deformer. Just leave all these options as they are. Apply. We'll go here and just increase the amplitude right here. So we can see what we're what we're doing. I want this fish. This fish is going to swim side to side. So I put its amplitude up so I can monitor the rotation value. And I'm just going to rotate that negative 90 degrees. And you can see that it's affecting the spine nicely. But what's happening is if I pull the offset and the waveform's moving, I'm not getting a very natural movement for a fish type creature. First thing we need to do is change the point of origin of the actual sine wave. And we'll put it at the front of the spine. So let's play with that offset. That's still not looking very good. So we need to actually change the drop off. The drop off will change how the sine wave affects the spine, where the, where the curve's at strongest and lowest. So let's just try the offset now. So you can see the head isn't moving back and forth, but the tail is. If I were to put the drop off to back to zero, you can see that the head is moving all over the place. So there we go. And next thing I need to do is I need to change its low bound or its high bound. So that, because of the way we rotate it, this can be zero. And the high bound needs to be up higher, so it covers the entire length of the spine. And go a little bit past. So let's have a look. That's a lot more convincing. Now, the only problem I'm having here is that the direction of the wave is wrong, because as I pull this, it should be going the other way. So we could either leave it and have the offset go in a negative direction, but because I want the offset to be positive, I'm just going to change this rotation up here to 90 degrees, and we'll change the high bound to zero, the low bound to negative 2.4, okay? Keep the drop off to negative one. Um, so what we've done is we've just sort of reversed the whole thing. So now it moves more naturally because a fish doesn't, this, this is traveling backwards. We need to have it leading from its head, so. So now that we have this spine, let's just animate the offset so we can see it in action. Just key this, and then key here. We'll just put it to 10 for now. And let's go into the keyframe editor here, the graph editor. Now what you can see is this curve has an ease in and ease out, and that's sort of the default setting. I just want it to be constant. I don't want the fish right now speeding up and slowing down, so let's just have a look. So we have this constant swimming of the spine. This is great. We're already half the battle is finished. Now, one of the things we ran into when we were doing monster fish is we had so many fish that manually controlling their orientation, how they were swimming, it wasn't going to work for us. So we figured out that we can actually use a wire deformer to control the fish on a path. First things first is let's just group all of these together because they need to all travel in the same space. Okay. So let's just call this group spine fish 01. And I'm going to just press insert here and change its point of origin to the front of the fish. So there we go. Now everything moves. Fine. We want to make sure that everything is grouped together. So the next thing that we can do here with this is we can actually create a path for this fish to swim along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this like EP curve tool again. And let's just go to, let's just go to a profile view here. Here's the side. And we'll start our curve point here. So I'm going to hold down X to snap to the grid. And I'm just going to zoom out pretty far. I want a pretty long path that I can have this little creature follow along. And point it there. OK, so I've got two points. Now, what I need to do is I need to rebuild this curve because currently I don't have much control over it. There's not a lot we can do with this path as it is. So if we go here to Surfaces and go to Edit Curves, and I can go to rebuild the curve right here and select the options. And I'll just reset this. Normally this is at four. I found like 15 or 20 was good. So let's just go 20, I guess. Go apply, let's have a look. I'm right clicking control vertex. You can see I've got lots of points to control here. Now this is, this is really beneficial because now I can do a lot more interesting things with this fish. And if I wanna just manipulate the curve in a general way, I can use my soft mod tool. Before you deform the curve or do anything with it, you have to do, you have to make your connections with a deformer. So now what we want to do is we want to actually use a wire deformer for this. So let's just get rid of the grid really quickly here. 
we go. So, uh, let's go up to back to animation and select create deformer. And we're going to create a wire, use the wire tool. So I'm just going to select that. I'm going to reset the tool, make sure everything's where it needs to be. So now in the bottom left corner here, it's saying to select the shape we want to deform. So let's bring the outliner back up again. I want to make sure I'm deforming the actual IK curve here, the curve. I don't want to affect the handle. I want to affect the curve. That's the thing that's driving the whole fish's spine. Um, let's rename this again. See path one. So the first thing we want to do is let's select the shape we wanted to form. So that's right here. And it says to press enter. So uh, press enter. And now it's saying to select the wire curve. And that's just right here. And then press enter. So now what's happened is we've actually created a relationship between the IK here and the wire. So you can see that there it's become part of its inputs. Now what we can do is we can animate this. We can just pull this along this path. And I'm just going to animate it really quickly. Take this group. It's important to have it all grouped together. We don't want to leave parts of the fish behind. So we will move this along the Z axis. So I'm just going to key this. And we'll go all the way to the end. We'll pull the fish. We'll pull our spine all the way along the path here. OK. So now nothing's going to happen path is perfectly straight but now what we can do is we can actually deform the, the vertices here and make something happen with the fish i can change this after the fact i can change it at any point and and the fish will follow it and i'm not going to lose all of my hard work there we go. So we have a pretty elaborate path for this thing to follow. Let's bring this down a little bit more. Okay. So now, okay. So let's see. All right. So you can see the fish is following, but something weird is happening. The tail is coming right off. This this fish is flying all over the place. Uh, the reason for this is we actually need to change the the distance of influence of this wire. So you can go to the path here that has been created. This is the I should mention this. This when you when you successfully create a wire deformer, it will create a base wire, which is the original wire, the un, unmodified wire, and that's what it uses as reference for its deformations. So do not get rid of that. It's important to keep that. Okay, so now what we can do is let's just select the path again, click wire, and what I want to increase is the drop off distance. So go to a part of the animation where it's really, really broken. And let's just increase this drop off so that the whole thing, now you'll watch the curve actually sticks to the path. There we go. That's what we want. So we can put this to 50. It can be higher. It can be whatever whatever you need, just until it works. The, the actual spine is following the path here quite, quite directly. So let's just pull through again. There you go. You see him swimming along there. And what's also happening is the sine wave is still affecting the spine. You see that? Let's increase the amplitude. We'll increase the amplitude of the sign handle here. 0.5. And you'll really see it in action. So you can see our little fish is following this path pretty well. Probably moving a little bit fast. And you can see it's accelerating at certain points. And this is because the curve points have gotten further apart. What that means is it actually moves faster along those. So you can actually bring those closer together. But you want to be careful not to bring them too close together. Because if they get too close together, it actually tries to compress the spine of the fish. And you'll get weird deformations. Also, I think what I can do is change the sine wave variables a little bit. One way to double check to make sure everything's working is just turn off the amplitude of your sine wave and make sure that the spine is following the path perfectly, which it is. There you go. It's moving along just fine. So when the amplitude's up to 0.3, we got our fish here. And I'm just going to change the wavelength to 1.5. So we have like a little slippery fella. There we go. He's just swimming along. And so eventually what we'll do is we'll hide these, hide the handles here so it's not so distracting. That's the basics of the idea. This can be applied to a pre-existing model, which I did do with the seal, as I had actually already had the whole thing built and rigged, but I created a spline IK chain and did this technique to the, spine, the existing spine and rig, and everything worked out fine. I didn't have to reverse or rebuild anything. 
Okay, so as an added bonus to this, I'm just going to show you what this looks like if you apply it to a model. I'm going to do this a little bit backwards since I already have my spine built. I'm going to build a model around it. So for now, I'm just going to turn the amplitude zero because I want a zeroed out spine to build my model around. And it doesn't matter that it's animated along a path because I'm going to model at this frame right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a really quick, really quick character. Since this is not really a modeling tutorial, I'm just going to speed up the footage here while I build the form of this funny little slug creature that we'll apply the spine to. Usually you would do this the opposite way. You'd already have a model and everything laid out. But it is, I think it's interesting and compelling to see that you can work backwards as well. You can have these things figured out and then apply them to something after the fact. I use this simple method of building a spine or just building a basic structure of a skeleton to test a lot of things on before having a model tied to it because it can get pretty cumbersome. And if there's problems or mistakes or things aren't working, it's really it can be really hard to just go through and fix something when there's a lot of geometry to wrestle with. Okay, so I've got this really basic creature put together. Kind of a gross little thing. So now what we're going to do, I'll move them up a little bit and scale them a bit longer. Now we'll just do a really simple bind and just skin it. I should mention that uh, something I didn't do in this video, but I should have done is at this point deleted the geometry history. You can see on the right hand side on the there's a bunch of endpoints like the poly surface modifications. If I delete history, all those go away. Like it can cause anomalies and weird things to happen. It didn't in this example, but it can. So let's just go to skin, smooth bind, reset settings. Uh, I'm not going to use classic linear. I'll just dual quaternion. And then shift select the bones. Oops, we need to turn bone selection back on. We'll turn everything back on. Apply. Now, I think what it does initially for the rig should be sufficient. So you can see the creature is now effectively swimming along the wire. I'm going to change the speed of this. Let's do it to like, let's go to 200. Let's get our outliner open again. And we'll just take the main group here, and I'm going to extend this scene to 300. And we'll get the graph editor up. There you go. And let's just take this and delete these and put this to put this to 300. There we go. And let's just make it. I'm going to make it a nice. So just straight ahead, just animates right along the curve. So you can see the fish is bending. The little creature is bending nicely. And now what we can do is let's just turn on the sign handle. There you go. And we will just put its amplitude to 0.3 or 0.5. Nice deformation there. And you can see it swimming along. Now it looks like my sine wave is, is stopping, right, because we ended it at 120. So let's just go here again and just pull this out to 300. There we go. And we'll, we're, we're going to change its amount, its offset to like 30. So we like tripled everything up. So let's have a look. There you go. Now we have this funny little swimming creature. The cool thing about this, again, is that if I want to change anything, I can do that. Like I can do that right away. So let's just stop this. Let's bring this fish here. Let's say I want him to really duck down more. I can just move this control down and manipulate that and really get a little bit more interesting of a path out of this character. So now you'll really torque over. There we go. And then here we can just let's bring this back even more. Make some really interesting things happen with him. Now the other thing that you have that you can do, which is really cool with this IK handle, is you have a twist and a roll. So we can animate the roll and the twist. So let's just roll it over. Creature's rolling over, and then we'll roll them back to the side here. It swings over and then goes the other way. Now you could attach this roll to the sine wave. 
it's really there's so much you can do also when you're actually doing your rig you can create some new attributes and direct them to all of these controls that you need so you're not jumping all over the model to actually get at them so that's just some basic rigging stuff so i would encourage you to check out some rigging tutorials if you want to learn about that in maya so something you can also you also have in this is twist and twist is handy because you know, nothing rotates its whole body all at once, especially something with a tail. So you're going to get a little bit of a fall off. So one of the things I like to do is take my roll and let's, let's just go into the graph editor really quick. I can take this roll animation. Let's close this roll. I'm going to copy it all. I'm going to go into the twist. And I'm going to paste it. And so I don't want it to be the same because it's just going to amplify everything too much. What I want to do is I want to offset it. So I'm going to take this and I'll just scale it and reverse it. Okay, so I get kind of the reverse value. And then I'm going to offset it a little bit. I find just by doing this, I get a little bit of a nicer rotation because the twisting counteracts the rotation of the fish, of the creature. So you get less of a uniformed rotation all down the spine. So just have a look here where he's really twisted here. We can really offset that. So let's go back into here. With the twist and the more i pull it over the more you're going to see it's correcting its curve so that it's not bent along the whole body equally but then it catches up and straightens itself out it's just a really automatic way to create something a little bit more organic this is a play blast out of maya of the final little creatures swimming along it's not perfect but um, for such a quick quick example i think it it works really well I also, I just wanted to show you an example too. What I did is I, I just created a flat shape um, that is essentially a piece of paper that you could attach a painting to. You don't have to be a great modeler to actually take advantage of these tools. Now I would reduce the amount of twisting that's happening because it would reveal the flatness of the painting, but you could have a painting of a really cool creature or a serpent or something on this and take advantage of all the deformations and everything that are happening in this simple rig. Okay, great. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, thanks for watching this video. I hope there's something in there that's helpful for you. I'm not much of a Maya expert. I'm sure there's a million tutorials on how to do this out there already. And hopefully there's something new in this for you and it's not too redundant. Uh, thanks for watching.